Well, today's video is about gardening, but also about my displeasure in breaking the chain. So for a very long time, every day, I've tried to put up a video for you guys of the garden, but I had a good excuse yesterday because the horrific stomach flu that my husband had then visited me and I ended up in the emergency room. So it has not been a very good couple of days. But today's a lot better and I'm taking it kind of slowly. So I thought I would just show you some easy things I might be working on today in the garden and that's my topiary. These are myrtle topiary. You guys made this type of myrtle compacta made famous by the inimitable Bunny Mellon, um, who was Jackie Kennedy's best friend and who incidentally designed the Rose Garden. She was the one who made Myrtle Topiary fashionable. And I have a lot of it and I'll be doing more videos on it. You've seen some of this before, but I thought I would just give you maybe a little tour of some of my tabletop topiary today. I'll be working on it. Let's go down the back steps and come over here to the bistro and I'll show you a couple more. So some of you when I showed you, I did a video, I'll put a link to it below about shopping your garden for topiary material and that's when I came upon these little cherry laurels that were planted by the birds and you can see I should have separated them for you but I've got four of them mulched in my classic gravel and this little guy is the one for those of you that were disappointed that I didn't show oops I don't want to knock that over that I didn't show the end result well here it is with a little leaf, dead leaf on it. And these are nice because they don't require a lot of sun. Again, they're free. And I can bring them indoors without them suffering immeasurably. Let me show you them from the other side. My camera skills aren't too great today. And one thing is, is I like topiary clustered together, but honestly, you really don't get the full effect of their form unless they're separated. And I've got over here, of course, I've got my traditional ones planted in the ground and my large boxwood over here. I've got a couple of lemon cypress that are in need of a prune. And you guys, those will be, you'll be able to find those Around the holidays, typically around Christmas, you'll be able to find them. This time of year is very difficult, and in Oklahoma, it's hard to get them to make it through our hot summers. And then over here, I've got a couple more myrtle topiary. This one is planted in this faux bois container that I got at Home Depot, by the way. And there's a little heart-shaped one. Again, I'm sorry, I didn't move these around so you could see them more clearly. At some point, I'll stage them all so you can see their individual beauty. So let's go to the back. And I'll show you some more tabletop friends. I should have gotten out here earlier, you guys. I'm a little wobbly, so forget the camera shakes today. You can see there's a Eugenia I could use as a tabletop there that is in desperate need of a prune. And here's another one of those fun myrtles. You can really get a tight clipped form. Now you'll ask me where I get them and I'll put a link below I get them from a place called Passiflora Kalamazoo. My friend Angie there can help you. And I'll tell you, they're not inexpensive, but they're so unique 
that I think they're worth the expense. And then over here, I've got my other tabletop ones that I think I've shown you in the past that were volunteers. These tiny little blue point junipers. These have become real favorites of mine. And I might put tiny twinkle lights on them at Christmas time and bring them in. But they look fun. I love the blue-green color and them clustered with some of the scented geraniums. So now, the reason I like to do this, I know you guys have seen my garden a thousand times before, but I think it's fun to do these little tours that deconstruct the individual components that make it look the way it does because it is the synergy between the details and the larger landscape that I think makes things beautiful and creates the effect that I like, what I call my signature look. And you guys already know that consists of gravel and lots of boxwood and orbs. So here are some more of my tabletops. These are fun. And you may ask, oh, but these are sitting in a tray of water. These don't care. They like as much water as they can get. You can't really overwater them. There's a little espalier that I did. You really can't overwater them. And once they dry out and turn crispy, you guys, they're pretty much goners. So let's go back in here. Now, here's an update on these. Um, sunshine lagustrum that I did they're still going strong you'll notice that the purslane at the bottom is not blooming right now the Sun isn't um, high enough in the sky yet but by noon these will definitely be in all their orange glory so you see I did not put up the hose it was all I could do to just water this morning um, much less practice good hose etiquette There's a little lavender there. I call these tabletops just because they're small enough that at any given time, if I'm entertaining, I can use them as a centerpiece or stage them about the garden, even bring them inside for short periods of time. And before COVID, when I used to do more entertaining than I do now, they often held center stage. So I'm going to blind you for a moment as we work down the border. And I want to give you an update on all of my rosemaries. They, I had them in a different location and I moved them back here. And I'm really just getting fascinated, you guys, by this tall, slender form. So I'm clipping them into tall, thin cones in staggering heights. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in another video. And then I just have a whole assemblage, assemblage of rosemary that are small enough for tabletops versus some of these larger ones. That guy needs some gravel. I see, and this guy back here is starting to spew out a few flowers. Interestingly, I'm not sure why the Silverado Sage, these topiaries have never been more beautiful, but this year they haven't flowered as much. And I'm not sure why that is. I repotted them so the foliage is happy. And the, the blooms, as beautiful as they are, they perfectly match the color of that just common tall phlox. But in the heat, they, they need lots of sunshine in order to bloom, but in the heat, the blooms don't last long. So I have a, a few more candidates to show you, but I think I'm going to hold off on that. I had hoped to do some much more hands-on instructional videos for you this week to put up, but honestly, I just wasn't up to it. And I'm sure you guys can understand. Um, being so sick, you end up in the emergency room is no fun, but I'm just thankful that I had someone to take me and that I was taken such good care of. So on that note, you guys stay safe and stay well. And
and if possible, go have fun with your own tabletop topiaries. See you tomorrow.